Testing. Testing one, two. Welcome to House Culture Conversations. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's happening, DJ Dewey B? What's up there, DJ D. Lott, Derek Lott. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for Yes, me. yes, man. Hey, well, this is the second time we're hanging out today. <laughs> yeah, I almost yeah, lost first, first time we had a flag on the play, right? We had a flag on the play. <laughs> and we had to get it right. We're going to get it right. And I know that um, uh, Dalton Deep is, you know, itching to get back with us and get that rescheduled. We'll get and we'll do that for those of you who wanted to uh, catch that. So we'll get that. You know, technology is a thing and we got to deal with it and work around it. Right. Yes, we do. It's yes, we just, do. Just, just what it is. But tonight. But tonight, the second half of Super Saturday is ready to go. He, we got, hey, we got Matrix NYC in the house, DJ Dewey B. NYC is in the house. Let's go. NYC versus Chicago, Shy City. Let's go. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? How yeah, you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> Matrix Yo. NYC. How what are you, my friend? Ellis, how y'all doing? I'm, yeah. I'm good over here. As I'm silly and good, so you know. How it is. <laughs> Hey, well, we are glad to have you on the show. Uh, tell us a little bit about you, where you're from. Oh, that, I mean, that guy. Oh, yeah, that guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, well, let's see. Uh, as the name would imply, um, born and raised in New York. You know, started, you know, started out my, my I guess I'll say my career <laughs> in the, uh, doing the clubs in New York and so forth. Um, went to school in, uh, went to school in Brooklyn. Um, spent most of my time in Manhattan, you know, doing just bouncing around the different doing different clubs and whatnot, and it just kind of has, I guess you could say, it just, it's kept, it's sustained me for <laughs> you know for as long as I, which I'm not going to get into that part of it, as long as I have been doing it because it's been a long time that I've been doing it. We can relate to that. Mm -hmm. yes, hey, well, as, as as the name suggests, House Culture Conversations, why do you think House has just been so uh, sustaining over so many years, over such a long time, and is as popular as ever today? Yeah, I got to say, first and foremost about house music, the biggest thing about it, and I think the thing that has made has given the people the ability to gravitate to it, is its positivity. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the thing that drew me to it the first time when, when I started hearing house music. It's because at the end of the day, like, I started off back in the days as a disco DJ. So it was kind of going from disco to house was kind of a natural progression for me. Um, and I had a guy, I, had a, I was working in the club, and um, working in some clubs at the time. I had this one kid that was a promoter that worked for a couple of record labels. And he used to bring me, you know, promos here and there, you know, here and there at the club. So... One night he brought me you know, some some new stuff. Say, hey, this is some new stuff coming out of Chicago. It's called house music. You no, know, check it out. Try it. You know, I heard it. I was like, ooh, I'm kind of liking this. No, I gotta say, my audience initially was a little hesitant. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. But what I was feeling, um, because stuff that he was bringing me, I mean, it was like starting with uh, Jack Your Body, um, the the Farty uh, Farty Funk Master, um, Love Can't Turn Around, um. Uh, what you call it? Uh, acid, acid tracks, and, no, that type of stuff was, I found it like, ooh, this is, I, f I was enjoying the groove to it. That was the first, no, the first thing. And a lot of it with, when you started listening, like I list I like to listen to lyrics and what it's saying, what the messages is, what the messages are on a lot of these tracks. And I found that a lot of the stuff that I was gravitating mostly to had a lot of like gospel influence, so I was very mm -hmm. into the vocals. Um, let's just say, like, even like the Lolita Holloways, the mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, I can't even, it's been so long, I can't even think, but just those type of the Jamie Principal, even Jamie Principal's, uh, uh, ly the lyrics of what he's talking about, when you really listen to them, like. The initial, like the initial shock, so to say, of Jamie Prince was like, maybe he wants to ride as an example. There was that initial, wait, what's this guy talking about? But you know, if you 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 feel that groove that he's giving you with his vocals, along with the music, and it's just all it all it makes you want to do is just dance, have a good time, and just you know, it's all positive. So to me, I think the positivity of of house music, like 
is like when was the last time you went to a, a house house music party and a fight broke out? Like that's almost <laughs> unheard, of, you know? Because everyone is everyone is in there. The list faces guys have been there trying to pick up girls. You know, girls are trying to find guys to buy them drinks. But the bottom line is everyone is there to have fun. They're not looking for drama. They're not looking for problems. Everyone and I think it's a big part of that is the music that instills that type of a vibe and that type of feel. So to me, what what has um, contributed to the longevity of house music and its, and its continued strength is just the whole positive vibe and influence that it, that it gives you. You know, there's, there's really almost not almost because nothing is perfect, but there's almost nothing negative about house music that can truly be said. You know, other than uh, other than you get those that the incessant boom, 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 man, and four o'clock in the morning or whatnot. Right? <laughs> so waking up your neighbor, right? Exactly. Waking up your neighbor is the <laughs> one the, one thing. problem with house music. <laughs> DJ Dewey B, as you, you listen to Matrix NYC, talk about Jamie Principal and talk about Lolita Holloway. Your, your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, no, those are two legends. Um, Lolita, we. We have lost, sadly, but uh, Jamie's still around. He's still yeah. doing great music, from what I hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the music is so healing. It uh, takes you on another level, and it uh, provides for a getaway from the the you know life life's little mm -hmm. down plays, shall we say? Right. Yeah, so. exactly. And that's and that's my thing. I like I've always believed that. There's a lot of there's, there's a lot of negativity negativity in the world. Let's face it; it is what it is. But you know generally and that's what entertainment is for people are looking for escapes they're looking for a release just even if it's for an hour or two to forget about their problems for a little bit you know and that's the one thing about house music that there's so much positivity in it that you can forget oh i had an awful day at work let me tune into this radio show or let me go out to the club and just dance and for a few hours and you know it just it just brings out nothing but good feelings so I, th I think that's a big, big part of it. And I'm grateful that it's there and that it's continuing as strongly as it is. As you were talking, I, I thought about something you said, hey, where they can go and escape for a couple of hours and just let the problems go away. It made me immediately think about Twitch and streaming mm -hmm. because now it, you don't have, have just a couple of hours. Exactly. You have twenty a twenty four <laughs> seven jack somewhere. Somebody is jacking. What, what are your thoughts about this? You know, this this boom of streaming DJs and house music being played nonstop around the clock. Mm -hmm. I think overall, I think it's a great thing. Um, one of the nicest things about it, and and again, it's like everything. You're gonna you're gonna hear your negatives. You're gonna hear your positives. To me, what I think was great about it is that it's op the ability to um, just just have access to broader audiences. So the fact that there's there is so much music being played 24 hours a day at any time, you can come in and reach someone that you wouldn't normally reach. Say, for example, like even now when I stream, I, I'll, every now and then I'll see guys coming in from Japan or from the UK and whatnot. I'm like, wow, let's face it, like 40 years ago, you know, you're playing in your local bar, your local club, so you got 100, 200 people there, but now you have the ability to reach literally millions of people around the world. So that's, again, uh, a big part of the growth aspect of it. And I think the, the whole streaming culture is something, again, is positive that you now have the ability to reach people. And as well, people can now, instead of having to go out and let's say, even like to say in New York, for example, you don't have to deal with the subways, you don't have to deal with the traffic, you don't have to deal with anything. You can run downstairs to the liquor store, even grab a bottle or something, have it there with you, tune in. You really want to go all out, lower the lights in the house, you know, crank up your television or, or your computer or whatever, and just start jamming to music that you are enjoying in the comfort of your home and be able to you know just release that way so that it's it's arguably even a safer environment you know from that standpoint yeah so that's think, pretty insightful dj do it be as we think about the i guess the origins right we're from the origins <laughs> uh, uh, of how, how the, the streaming environment gives us a way to stay connected where many of us are have moved past club life and the club scene mm -hmm. That is definitely true. Um, you know, um, the streaming thing is is house 
on a whole another no- level. It's a higher plane. You know what I'm saying? It it puts you in connect us three guys in three mm-hmm. different spots in the, in the <laughs> world. I'm talking right now about good music, yeah. and that's the key. You know, just to be connected. Exactly yeah. the opportunities that it presents to bring. You know a broad spectrum of people all all into one house, for lack of a better way of putting it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think it's Absolutely. awesome. <laughs> hey, well, welcome. You're listening to House Culture Conversations. We're hanging out with Matrix NYC. We see you out there on Twitch. I see you out there on Facebook and YouTube. I see you coming on. So thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it so much. So with this streaming environment that we're in now that we have access to there is a conversation that's going on that it's watered down we everybody can be a dj everybody's getting out there what, what are your thoughts on that well it it's kind of like the proverbial double-edged sword um and you can make that argument about technology in general like you'll have you'll have those who say oh the technology has made it too easy for everybody to do it and that is true that's something you can't deny but at the same token um, I'm a believer in the cream always rises to the crop, to the top, I should say, excuse me. So that what happens is, yes, the technology is accessible to everybody, but, and I'm not trying to say this in a negative way to anyone, but I'm thinking in terms of what ends up happening, those who, the true talent will take advantage of the technology to enhance their talent. And that's how I look at it. Um, I think, you know, the fact that it is accessible to everybody gives everyone the opportunity to to, if they're serious about it, to improve themselves, to improve their skills, to enhance the themselves over time. But I, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing because it also, it also helps some of those who are already at the top, for lack of a better way of putting it, keeps you on your toes because there's that young kid, that, that young 16 year old that he was like, mom, buy me a laptop. <laughs> you know, this is what I want to be the next superstar DJ. You know, that kid is hungry. That kid wants to come out there. There's these young kids, they're like this, you know, they're like, hey, this is what I, I don't have to worry about the corporate nine to five world. I got all this time in the world to play with this stuff. And if they're serious about it, hone their skills to where they become that next level. So yes, it has warded it down to the extent that anyone can do it. But at the end of the day, you know, your audience will see, okay, this is true. This is where the talent is. This is what I'm really feeling compared to, you know, the other. But it's not to say that, you know, don't do it. You know, if you're, if you're, uh, I'm speaking to the audience in general. If you're a youngster who may be the, your older brother or, and which is a lot of cases, in, in a, lot of, um, a lot of the cases, their parents, you know, they were into club music, they were into house music and whatnot, and they're just being exposed to it. You know, if you have a passion for it and you're starting to feel it, you know what, do you. Go out there, you know, talk to your mom, spend that money on that computer, buy that software, you know, but then take it seriously, practice it. You know, the only way you're going to get better at doing anything is to do it constantly. You know, as a matter of fact, Dreamaker Diva is saying it perfectly. The world is, there's plenty of, heck, heck hello, there's 8 billion people in the world. You got, you got to find a niche for somebody somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So just do you, just stick to it, be serious about it. You know, there's plenty of space for everybody. You know, like I use myself as an example. I'm not looking to be the next, you know, super duper billionaire superstar. But if I have my, you know, my set audience that like what I do, and I'm cool with that. I have that that little niche that I fill, and I'm comfortable with that. If, you know, so if you go in with that mindset, you know, the success comes from what you make of it. You know, if you believe that this is what you want to do, you no, know, don't let anybody question you or stop you from stop you from doing it. You know? Yeah, Gotta, I, love, I, love I, love <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. I love that. DJ Dewey B, you often say, "Play your box." Are we watered down, or <laughs> or play your box? Play your box, man. Do your thing the way you want to do it, and somebody will love you. Hey, I love you. Just keep doing what you're doing. Okay? <laughs> exactly. Hey, we got a question from, from the crowd. Oh, wait a minute. I got to throw that up there, Judy Nishan. Play your box. Play your box. That's it. That's it. Now, we did a, a, a series of shows at the end of last year with uh, a few mods because, you know, I recognize as we've moved into the streaming environment, there's this role that has emerged. And they actually are sometimes cooler than the DJs when they come into the stream. 
You know, they come into the stream and like everybody, like, hey, what's up? Guess who in the house? I'm like, wait, hold on, hold on. I'm playing my box. I'm playing my box. Right? I mean, the day of all praise the DJ might be over. Uh, so I want to ask you, um, that Dream Maker Diva put in here. Wait a minute. Yeah, the role of the mobs. Yes, yes. Talk a little bit about the your thoughts on the role of the mob. Well, this let's, let's let's take it back a little further than that than just the mods. If you think about it, the mods are arguably the equivalent of the 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 door staff, the promoters at clubs, because they're mm. essentially there. And not to say not to downplay anything or not to say it's a job, but their job was to get the crowd in, to get them hyped up, get them excited. They come into the club after they got the people in. They're interacting with the crowd. They'll, they're getting people drinks. They get there. They're hyping it up. It's so to me, that role is essential. Uh, that's the bottom line. It is essential because. The, the mods, in this case, it's the mods, are working with the DJs to get the crowds hyped up, to get them excited about what's going on, to get them excited and being there. <laughs> nice. A little modesty there. It's okay. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But exactly. It's, 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 it's the evolution of the door person to the moderation because that's exactly what they're doing there. They stay on top of who gets into, who gets into the spot. And then who, once the, the I'm going to say it this way, the chosen ones <laughs> are in the spot, their job is then to go around and make sure they're having a great time. And that's what mods are doing now. And I think it's awesome. It's like, and I'm going to put it this way, it's one less thing that I got to worry about. <laughs> hey, <laughs> like I, I can feel focus you. on the music. <laughs> well, we got That's My Jam in the house. Everybody's having a good time. Well, I tell you what, they're starting to get active in the chat. We, we don't have to get control of this thing. Wait a minute. Mods taking over again. Look at them. Look there at you me. go. <laughs> <laughs> See, they, again, they're getting the party started. They're getting everybody hyped up. You know, so I'm not knocking them. I'm grateful for them. <laughs> Believe that. <laughs> Yeah, now, now they're talking to each other. They're talking about <laughs> celebrating each other's birthday. There we go. There we go. That's DJ it. Dewey B, you were commenting commenting on, on the mod. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mods are the essential part of whatever Twitch is becoming or whatever that streaming thing is going to become because it's really just a, a show for people to gather and, and, you know, get together as friends and talk and chat amongst each other. And listen to some great music in the background. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's that's yes, how man. I see it. I yeah. I didn't I started out in the streaming thing, and it was just you and I, Derek. So yeah, yeah, me and you. Me we and didn't you. have we, we didn't have a mod at the time, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad it's it's here. Well, now. You, it's we, 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 I, I was like P Diddy. I was dancing on the stage. <laughs> hey, do it, killing it, do it, killing it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we started off right. We started off right and yeah. stayed in the game. So Matrix NYC, tell us one of your you know cherished stories from back in back in the day or even recently now, because you've been at this thing for a while. What's one of your favorite stories? Uh I'll I'll say probably like the the things that stand out to the, the there are two things there are two I'll say events that stood out to me that stand out to me the most. I guess I'll put it this way from my career. <laughs> I'll put it like that. Um, back in the back in the eighties, there's a radio station, Kiss FM in New York, that they used to do in the summer. Um, the they used to have like a what's called the 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 summer cleanup series. So on Saturdays, they go to different neighborhoods. They encourage the community to clean up their community in terms of like literally physically cleaning and whatnot. And they'd have their DJs come in and and have performances. They have you know, they bring in artists to perform while these are going on. And you know, so I was fortunate enough to be. I, I used to be a member of a record pool in New York called Sure Record Pool. Um, they rest in peace. You know, founded by Bobby Davis. Um, there's a lot of us here in New York that we consider consider him our musical father. That he really, you know, opened up a lot of doors for us within the music stuff. And so he was the one that got our record pool involved with Kiss FM. So being able to be part of those summer those summer cleanup jams was like an amazing opportunity for me in that sense. Um, so just uh, that's one thing. And then the other thing was, um, you know, so this, after I started producing music and so forth, there was, um, I, I was also work at the time I was working, I was the music buyer at a record store in, in New York, uh, Mainline Records at the time. 
So, you know, I was at the store one day, you know, you know, you know selling music, whatnot. And in the background, another New York station, WBLS, they had what's called the lunchtime mix with John Robinson. So, you know, I'm there doing my thing. I say, yeah, this is the latest of this, latest of that, playing music for people, the radio's playing in the background, lunchtime mix is going. Then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, what? And I'm hearing in the background, I'm hearing a track that sounds real familiar. I'm like, yo, that's my track. <laughs> that's my track flick right there. John Robinson was playing something that just came out on um, on Emotive Records. It was a track that I did with uh, DJ Romaine. Um, it was a Let It Groove You. And John Robinson was playing it on the radio. That was the first time I'd ever heard anything that I produced you know, played live on the radio. So needless to say, I was doing triple back somersaults. Like, <laughs> ecstatic. I'm like, yo, that's me. That's me. Like, yay. Hey. So... I guess so. I gotta say, those are the two things that stand out the most to me. There's a whole bunch of other little stories, but we only got a half hour, so I'm not gonna get greedy. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, there's there's no traffic cops. If we, we spill over a little bit, we're, we're not gonna get any any trouble. So, with, with that said, we, we are uh, take your time, take your time. So now you're also a producer. How did you get into producing? For a lot of DJs, it's a natural progression. And what do you prefer, DJing or producing? Um, well, for me, getting into producing, is it was just that. It was the, I guess you could say, the natural next step. Because I'm listening to the music that I'm getting all this great music from people. And I'm seeing like, wow, this, you know, I would love to be part of that as well. Now, a, a part of it also comes from the fact I do have a musical background. Um, my grandfather was a session musician back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And I'm actually a horn, a trumpet player and a clarinet player. So there is a little bit of a musical background within me anyway. So oh, I, man. there you go, do it. There you go, do it. There you go. So I started DJing and then you no, know, just like, hmm, no, I wouldn't mind trying this, so to say. So I hooked up the very um i hooked up with a couple of people initially a couple of just, just so many guys in my past but that are still relevant that i hooked up with and we just started you know doing tracks together one of the first guys i hooked up with was dj romaine and him and i are still uh, we're great friends he, and sure a lot of people know dj romaine he's out there doing his thing all the time we still hook up and you know hang out or whatnot but you know, doing tracks with him you know, was was uh was one of my first introductions to it and it's just one of those things that ever since then, like I don't put out, I don't produce and put out a lot of tracks because you no know, combination of things. A, hey, you know, I was a family man for a number of years, you know, so my daughter was my number one and is still my number one priority. But also, you know, I had to do the corporate nine to five because, like I said, I'm not looking to be a millionaire here, and clearly I'm not. So, so that was the thing. Couldn't but, tell. Couldn't tell. <laughs> you know, but you know, at the same time, it was it was it's fun to me because, like, one of the main reasons why I got even got into DJing. At the end of the day, I like being that guy that is helping people to have a good time. That's that was my number one reason for getting to DJing. So I liked like I'm not a big fan of this current like look at me. I'm the DJ. Stare at me. Just stand there. Take pictures and stare at me. I've never been that guy. I've always preferred to like be I'm happy hidden in the corner somewhere looking down at you guys and like, yes, you're dancing. You're out there partying, having a good time. And I'm helping you do that. I'm part of that cause. And let's face it, when I first started DJing, like most guys, you know, I'm looking to meet girls too. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's the, other, <laughs> the other side of it, you know. But so I'd say between the two, uh, DJing is my true passion because of the fact that I like to help people have a good time. I, I love seeing the crowd partying, dancing, just and knowing that, yeah, I'm kind of the reason why they're, they're releasing their stresses, they're releasing the negativity and helping them to enjoy themselves. That to me is arguably the most important part of being the DJ because your job isn't to be the one that you get stared at. I wanna be the guy, I wanna see you guys. I wanna see you guys dancing. I wanna see yeah. you guys having fun. That to me is more important. So yeah, yeah. that's kind of where that comes from. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, who have, who've been a couple of your big influences? Well, to tell you, the, the my number one influence uh, is the man who, who caused me to get into DJ. So, again, going back to WBLS back in the day, on Saturday nights, they had a show called the Saturday Night Disco Dance Party. And the DJ there was Ted Courier. And so the first time I heard that, I'm listening to him mixing and whatnot. And I'm like, ooh, I, this is kind of cool. I like this. And you know, listening for a few weeks. And then at one point, I just was like, 
And I was, I was like 14 at the time <laughs> when, when I heard, it, heard him. And at one point, I was like, Ma, I want to be a DJ. Buy me some equipment and whatnot and so forth. So in, to that end, I owe Ted Courier, to which whom, him and I still have a you know, pretty good you know, uh, relationship with. We still talk here and there. And it's like to, I thank him for introducing me to this whole DJ thing. And like I said, it was like one of those, I want to do that. So it was funny. And uh, my grandmother was the one who, who, who really – uh, supported me on that. She was like, "Look, I'll tell you what. You get, you go out, you get a job, you, you work and so forth. I'll pay half, you pay half, and I'll we'll help you get started." <laughs> so, I got my little part time job working in the supermarket. You know, saved up some money. Bought my first. I, I had a set of BSR turntables, a Radio Shack mixer, Pioneer receiver, and a set of um, uh, Sanyo speakers, and that was my first ever DJ system that I had. That I started to start doing you know, parties around the neighborhood. I was like the local DJ in my neighborhood, so to say, and then it just kind of blossomed from there. So, yeah, Ted, Ted Curia, yeah, you know, that's that's the man that I, I give all I blame for all of this. <laughs> you know? That's it. That's it. So now uh, we DJ Dewey B. We've got a question from Judy Nissen seventy five. She says, "How do we both collaborate to make house culture conversations happen?" Great well, question. It, it goes back to nineteen eighty two. <laughs> Our collaboration started around that time. Yeah, real talk. Been, real talk. We've been talking about house culture ever since. So. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Go way back. Uh, go way <laughs> yeah. back. Yeah, and I, I think when we started streaming, it, it was part of what brought us to the stream. Because to your point, Matrix NYC, we didn't get on, okay, we're going to be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. No. We just want to play our box. Really, Dewey was playing yeah. his box. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I like to talk. You know, so <laughs> let's put a talk show with it. You know, let's put a talk there show with it. And, you know, that's how we got started. And we found a, a, a beautiful group of people. Our, our, our real intent wasn't to focus on the big names. Mm-hmm. You know, not the VIPs. We wanted the people that was just like us out there making it now have we had some vips absolutely we've had jesse saunders on we've had big names like vince adam dj alicia we've had some big names but we we don't discriminate and we come one come all if you love the the music and you love the culture add your name to the story add your info your content because this is the stuff that will sustain the culture see we have these things taped now what is it doing three years yeah, you go back and re- listen to some of the stuff. It's fascinating to hear you guys talk about, you know, house music. It's a feeling. It's a spiritual thing. It's and when you hear person after person after person after person talk about how influential this music has been in their lives, I'm telling you, we need to run for government, government, because we could <laughs> yes. fix the problem in the world with this music. Yep, no doubt, no doubt. Just no we doubt. just spread this positivity everywhere. It's okay. like okay, enough of the nonsense. This is just let it let stuff go, relax, just chill. <laughs> you know, it's, okay. It's, it's a lot easier, it's easier done than said in <laughs> reality. That is absolutely right. So Matrix NYC, how can people find your music? Mm-hmm. How can they find you? Tell us. Well, um, Judy Nissan, who is my, she's my mod and my collaborator and this whole streaming thing and this, this music stuff in general, she's going to, she has, she's going to put up my, um, uh, my link tree, which has yes. uh, links to all of my socials, my, my Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can actually, as far as my tracks and releases, I'm, I got stuff on track source, um, Beatport, all the usual suspects, so to say, um, Spotify and the whole nine yards. I'm there. Um, I also have, um, I'm in the process of launching uh, 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 a merch site and clothing and clothing brand. So it's called House Music Wear. That's going to be, everything falls into place by the end of, I'm looking for Memorial Day weekend to have the official launch. Um, so you can stay tuned to that. <laughs> but all that's awesome. going to be in the link tree. And, you know, 
I'm always open to if anyone wants just to say hi. I'm good. I'm cool with that. They'll just stop by, say hello. You know, nothing else. Just check me out here and there. I'm around. I'm always around. <laughs> that is awesome. So, where do you see this thing going? <sighs> I mean, like I said, I'm seeing more and more young kids getting involved in it. So that's that makes me feel good to know that, um, you know, it's it's still some, some future there. Actually, I want to share one picture with you guys and see if you guys can see. I don't know, hopefully you'll be able to see it. This is what I think of, you know, I think of you know, sharing it with the youngsters. So that's me back in the day with my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got on top of my turntables. She's wearing the headphones. And I believe there's a microphone there in the hand. This is what I'm talking about. Get the kids involved. You know, get them, start them young. I started real, I started my daughter real young. She she didn't stick with it, unfortunately, to me, unfortunately, but it's all good. But I'm thinking in terms of she's gonna have grandkids. She's gonna have my grandkids soon. So I have a second yeah. shot at keeping that going. No, but at the end of the day, it's like clearly there is there's still excitement in it this and it's because of the positivity of it that people you know will continue to listen um they're all and literally anywhere in the world you go in all different formats i mean i'm going to say i don't necessarily love every format version of house music that i hear out there but hey at the end of the day it's what people are getting into if you can if you're feeling it and you're enjoying it you know continue to share it share it with the youth because yeah. at the end of the day let's say those old timers aren't going to be here forever <laughs> you know so we got to yeah, pass that absolutely. legacy on you know to the next to the next ones and and have them continue it on and so on and so forth i think that's really the key is sharing it with the youth and keeping them excited about it and you know just teaching them say hey look this is this is something positive that brings people together, you know, all walks of life, you know, from any and every corner of the world. You got people listening to house music, listen, you know, out there dancing and partying, just like forgetting about the nonsense around them. Because like I said, even if it's for an hour on, on Twitch, you know, people are having a good time and you're helping that. And that's something you should be really excited about, be really happy for, and just continue to want to do. So I think this is the advent of the technology in streaming, be it Twitch, YouTube, or whatever, you know, that is what's going to continue this. And I do believe that you know, let's embrace that technology and continue to share it with everybody. And that's how it's going to grow. And I believe that's what's going to keep it growing. I don't think this is stopping anytime soon. <laughs> hey, yeah, well, Dream Maker Diva said, hey, uh, uh, let's keep this rolling. I'm loving the energy. I'm loving the energy. And we just got DJ DCI drop in. Peace and love. DJ DCI, another brother from the East Coast. Oh, my gosh. DJ Dewey B, this has been motivating. It's been inspiring. As you hear Matrix NYC, yeah, just really pour from the heart. What comes to mind? What comes to mind is uh, it's funny how we were, in, back in the day, we were separated by a lot of miles, but we all kind of had the same experience. You know, the yeah. music brought us the same joy. And that's the key, mm -hmm. really. Yeah. Like, that's, the, that's the perfect word. Joy is what it does bring. And that's what we bring to people by sharing this with everybody. We're bringing people joy, bringing people happiness. You know, we're, we're just trying to make people feel good. So, yeah, that's a great word to describe it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So in the absence of having having this music, what do you do? What do you do outside of <laughs> you know, DJing and producing and obviously your fondness for your daughter? What what, what else do you do? You play golf? You, you swing a golf club or something? Well, I'm <laughs> terrible at golf. I like trying. But <laughs> uh, other, I mean, other than the music stuff, my um, I'm the, in my corporate life, a big way to describe it, I'm actually an IT geek. So uh, I'm the system admin for you know, a fairly large company here in New York. Um, and arguably, that's kind of also why I, I relate so much to technology, since kind of technology is what I do. I see, I see how you can incorporate the technology to enhance your your skill set, to enhance what you're doing. So again, I know that's why I do embrace it. I think you know embracing the technology is a good thing. Uh, but it's like anything else, you know, it can be used for good, it can be used for evil, so to say, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I see the positive in it and the potential for it. So um, 
uh, that's pretty much my thing, just the technology. I've always been that guy that likes to see, let's take something apart, see how it works and try to put it back together and, and pray that it works even though I have extra parts on the side. So <laughs> it's kind of a natural thing there. <laughs> oh my goodness. DJ, Dewey B, when you hear Matrix talk about technology, what's your thought? Is technology enabling us or crippling us? Uh, I think it's enabling us. We wouldn't even be having this conversation four years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's definitely enabling us. Um, I'm not sure how this AI stuff is going to affect everything. But, <laughs> you know, we got to roll with it. When yeah, the Terminator comes to take over, we'll have to. <laughs> I'll tell you, it terrifies me. I'll be honest. Seeing what AI could do is terrifying. But at the same mm -hmm. token, it's like, okay, let's let's see if we can wrap our hands around it to keep it right. keep it contained, keep it under control. <laughs> well, well, I tell you what, the AI statement is pretty interesting. <laughs> I heard uh, someone write a song, put it in Kanye's voice. <laughs> and release it as a new Kanye track, mm -hmm. and it you know it went bananas, right? Obviously, it's a new Kanye joint, right? But it, it was it was AI. I think it was like almost two hundred thousand views on Spotify or plays on Spotify before they Crazy. realized, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, right, and you know everybody, every, the guy who did it is like, take the money and run, kill, kill the computer, kill the computer. <laughs> <laughs> and and the funny thing was, I, I did read that story, and I forgot the guy's name, but it was one of those. It was blatantly obvious that he was he was kind of flaunting that. Yeah, I'm using technology here to do this, and you guys are still letting me on here. Pff, who might argue? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly. So there's a question coming from the crowd: When will you be streaming <laughs> again? When will they see you next? Oh. Uh, so everybody wants to know. <laughs> well, I've um, I've been taking a little time off to a had some health issues. I had to take care of that, but I'm back strong. Um, I've been doing some testing here and there, so you'll see random. So if you follow me, that's the key. Follow me, you'll you'll see random pop ups of 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 me streaming here and there while I'm testing out things, making sure I'm tweaking the knobs, making sure all the buttons are good. But my normal streaming times are Saturday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern. That, those will be my normal um, uh, uh, stream sessions. So the the regular the regular weekly sessions will resume back in May. But like I said, if you follow me, you know I'll randomly pop up on a Sunday night on a when I like doing a Wednesday night midweek you no know, warm up as I like to call it. You know Judy Nissan's been trying to push me to do some more just random things. I also do guest spots for on um, Depths of the Underground. So again, if you follow me, you'll know about these little things here and there. Yeah, you know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I don't get around. Well, <laughs> hey, we appreciate you so much. For the folks on Twitch, you guys are headed to the birthday party, DJ Alexander yeah. Sasha. You guys are on your way now. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. We appreciate you so much for listening to House Culture Conversations. And for the rest of you, we are going to catch you next time. DJ Dewey B, any last words? Uh, pick up that uh, Matrix merch in May. That's, <laughs> That's it. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Man, it's Joe. been a pleasure. Take yeah. care now. Fellas, I am so grateful. Thank you for having me. And thanks, everyone, for tuning in. This has been awesome. I'd love to come back again sometime, just saying. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, and with that, we will be back. Peace. Yes. Peace. <laughs>